heard it five after. It's almost five after now. This happens at regular classes that we do at the library. We'll start and then people come in and you kind of have to backtrack so they get yeah. caught up. So um, I'll wait a few more minutes, but then we're going to st just start. And tonight I was telling uh, Marion and uh, that tonight we're going to, I'm going to go over how I went about doing the two tiles I have, what steps I followed, and uh, really most of the work you're on your own picking a theme and, and designing it and painting it, but I will go over the very basics and, and get you started. Some of you sound like you've already been painting quite a bit, so um, please feel free to raise your hand, ask a question, I'm fine with that. And probably won't go over my, a half hour, I'm thinking. Usually when we do classes at the library, do a presentation and go, hand out all the materials and then we walk around while people are working. So we don't need to do that tonight. You're on your own working at your own uh, leisure whenever you have time to do it. But I'll give you the very basics and uh, let you go. All right, so I have fun. Yes. Could I ask you a question? Sure. I was wondering, are we supposed to have like a theme like a shared theme of library or books? No, or? I'm going to talk about that. It's oh, a great good. question, Karen. Okay. I, I'm going to address that. Uh, okay. So um, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Susan Dollard. I am coming to you from uh, my studio in beautiful Smallwood, New York. I think it's beautiful. Um, and uh, I'm here teaching the class representing a group of gardeners. You're called Friends of the Garden, Sullivan County. The majority of us are trained master gardeners. And after training, we decided we like being together and, and volunteering. So we volunteer a lot at the library in Monticello in the gardens. They're beautiful and they're growing and getting better every year. So that's why I'm here and why I'm teaching the class. I'm representing them. And uh, Pamela Zychek's with us tonight, she's a member. And uh, we volunteer all over Sullivan County, whatever money we make from teaching classes, plant sales, uh, we make fire starters and whatever we get for those, they're little starters for grills and the money goes directly to the Federation for the Homeless and we do their gardens as well. Um, so that's just a little background and why I'm here and teaching the class tonight. Um, in a kit, has everybody picked up their little kit, their bag with paints and brushes to get you going? All right, you probably will need more supplies than that, but maybe not, or maybe you already have it. The paint that's in the little containers is acrylic paint. Oh. And if you needed more, you can go, almost any craft store has them like this. Um, inexpensive, a couple of bucks a bottle. And they last a long time. If you get them this way, shake them up really good before you use them. They all are water-based. So you clean your brushes with water. You thin the paint with water. Um, and so you got two strips to get you started. I mean, who knows what colors you're going to want. So hopefully you have other acrylic paints. And if not, might be the time to invest in some to have for yourself. The other thing that was in the kit were brushes. Um, just going to go over basic brush. This brush, you should have gotten a flat or a filbert. If it's rounded on the tips, it's called mm -hmm. a filbert. And this is for filling in areas, painting in areas. So it's called a filbert or a flat. They uh, come in different sizes. So depending on what you're painting. I have tons of brushes. I never seem to have enough. It's like books, you never have enough. Um, then you also have a, probably a round, a very small brush, and that's for details. And again, these are very basic supplies and hopefully you can do with what you've got. And if not, like I said, you may wanna go out and purchase some special things for yourself. And Walmart does have all this, so you're more than welcome to go there and, and fill in whatever you're missing. Okay, 
Uh, when you're working with brushes, some are very, very expensive. My oil brushes are very expensive and I take very good care of them. Any brush you purchase needs to be cleaned when you're done with it. In this case, you're using acrylic paints. So make sure you clean them with water and really get them good and clean. You can even use a little dish detergent or something, really get them clean and wipe them and get them back into shape with your fingers. Never store a brush down, head down, because that ruins the bristles. Always have it pointing up. When I was teaching art, elementary art, I used to put a face, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and I called him Mr. Bristles, so the kids would remember not to smush Mr. Bristles, but to have him standing up in the can. So this is my, one of my cans of brushes. Never have enough. Um, okay. First thing you got to do when you get that wonderful, wonderful slate is clean it. I cleaned it with soap and water detergent, uh, rinse it really well, and I dried it gently with a paper towel, and then I let it sit overnight to dry the rest of the way. Speaking of the slate, I just want to give you a little background. I was born and raised in Monticello on the street that's directly in back of the library, the old library. One of our favorite places to go was the children's uh, room downstairs in the old library. We hung out there a lot, did homework there, just it was a place to go. That was pre-computer, pre-everything. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I remember the slate roof very well on the library, and that's where these slates came from. The library was built in, let me see, I jotted it down. September 7th of 1936. So these are almost, they're about 80 years old, almost 100 years old. So what you have to me is something really special. The other part of this is that the original library called Ethel B. Crawford was a young man who passed away very early, but he was a painter. And his mother built the library in his memory and had his paintings hanging up in the library. So to me, this is like a circle that goes round. Now we're taking something from the old library and painting a picture on it to be put on display. So just wanted to share that with you. To me, that's kind of special. Susan, um, I, I, I'll just jump in from the library side. We, okay. we have his paintings up and um, I actually have them. I, I made kind of a, a gallery on our website. Of Did his you? Nice. In case anyone wanted to see them. I can uh, put that in if anyone's interested. So oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I remember them as a kid. We, they were always hung up high over the shelves, but, you know, liking art, we'd stand, I'd stand and stare at them. I, I remember a lot of them. And probably mom was very distraught and losing her son, and this was her way of, you know, having his name live on. So I just, I wanted to share that background with you, because to me, that's, part of the slate, the whole slate idea. <laughs> sorry, my brother doesn't get it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. I just turned him off. My brother lives in New Hampshire. He calls every night. I forgot to turn my phone off. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, this is one of the slates that I had gotten. It's been washed. It's been dried. I let it sit overnight. Some of the edges, as you can see, are quite fragile, so you kind of have to be careful with it. Um, I also put in the bag, if you're working with children or if you want to just get right in there and sketch out with chalk and decide what you want to draw, you can do it that way and then paint it in. So that's why I put chalk in there. Uh, I know a number of people picked up, the 4-H picked up a bunch of them to do as a project, which I think is great. But the nice thing about chalk, this is what you used to have in school, a slate. You can just rub it off and it's gone. Okay, so that's why you have that, just so you know. Um, yeah, the Did somebody ask, say something? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let me just clean the slate. First thing to do, make sure it's good and clean. And you're going to notice they are not perfect. They've been on a roof and you have things like this, like white spots, and they don't necessarily go away. Try to work it into your design and just work with it. Um, 
because I tried to paint over them, I tried to remove, it's not gonna happen. So I just make it work with the design. Do you, re um, do you recommend using the flat side or the side that has like some texture? Well, I'm showing you the back because I'm holding off showing you what I've been working on. This is the back, back. The front has an edge, a bumpy yeah. bump edge that goes yeah. all the way okay. around. So that's yeah. the front. Um, someone asked, when you're painting, do you put it on an easel? To me, it's not an easel kind of thing. It, it's what you're comfortable with, though. I took my loose leaf that I have in the studio, and I put the uh, slate like this, so it slanted up slightly so I could see what I was doing. But that's up to you. You do it any way you want. Now, I've done two of them, as I said. And what I, the system I've done is uh, draw a quick sketch. And it's very quick, not a lot of detail. The detail will be painted in with paints. But I picked for my theme this time, my favorite book ever, The Secret Garden, which I shared with my daughter, Lindsay. We read a chapter every night until we finished the whole thing then we watched every single movie of it that we could find so anyway this is very special to me so that's what my slate is on and the artwork itself is from that which is phenomenal to me i love that whole era so that's how i picked a theme the other one i did i picked a theme it's kind of funny but i i'm a gardener as well as an artist and I had picked up seeds from the Hudson Valley Seed Library. And on this is uh, a bookmark they gave me. And on the bookmark, it says, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. And that was by Cicero, of all people. And the, um, the seeds were Tiny Tim tomatoes. So my husband's Tim, I couldn't resist. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, that's where this one oh, came cool. from. So it's what you, as far as the theme, it could be a book, a poem, a saying, or anything important to you. Uh, uh, some lady did three beautiful tiles with the seasons in Sullivan County. Oh. Another one, uh, somebody said Woodstock. What, you know, it could be something as simple as a peace sign or whatever you, you know, don't feel intimidated by it because we have people of all different levels. And that's not the point. The point is to have fun with it. And then when you're done and you bring your uh, painting in. Um, Excuse me. Uh, go ahead. Um, how long do we have to do this? Like when is it? Is it I don't think they set a deadline. Whenever you get to it, bring it back to the library. Anyway, I was talking about having an easy sketch to follow. Can you see that all right? It's very mm -hmm. fun the door to the garden and I have pastels all over my studio I took a black one and rubbed the back real good and then I put it down on the slate and traced over it with a pencil and you get a good enough image to start with and if you don't want to go to all this trouble then just go ahead and paint or draw on the tile that's again up to you um also, printing, I'm always afraid my printing is going to, I have good handwriting, but I'm afraid it's going to, so I did the same thing. I got the secret garden off the internet or my uh, computer, blackened it out with chalk. You can also do it with pencil mm. and then laid it down. So I got a nice straight line with the printing and I was happy with it. I'm going to show you what it came out like. Also put the, uh, this time put the, um, author's name on the bottom. I thought it was important to include her name. Same thing from the computer, blacked it out, flipped it over. Um, okay, so th this is the one, this was my sketch that I showed you with the door. And this is how far I've gotten. So I, I've got the printing on the top. The secret garden. I got a door halfway open to kind of invite your eye in. Mm -hmm. And there's a bird in the story where the kids keep following this bird and find the garden. So I'm going to put the bird somewhere up in the plant. And then I have the author's name down here. And it's not done yet, but it's fun. It's just relaxing to me and fun. Sure. 
first one I did was the one for Tiny Tim Tomatoes. If you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. And that was this one. Mm. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Got a table and a chair and garden boots. And there she is outside the garden with a stack of books. Mm. And I feel like that could be me. Anyway, um, this one is mounted on a piece of, piece of plywood and we will, Tim and I will do that for you. We'll paint the plywood and get it mounted. Um, we use the screws where the two holes are on your tile. We use those and we painted it black so they don't stand out. And that's how we attached it. Can everybody mm -hmm. see it all right? Yeah, beautiful. Myself, so. Very nice. Um, anyway, uh, and then we put them up on the wall. And this is like a dear project to me. I would just love to see artwork in a public space by people that are artists, hobbyists, craftsmen, just want to do it, you know, say something and share something. I think it's a wonderful idea. So we'll take care of this part, the background. If you can do this for us, please make sure you put your name on it somewhere because we got a couple and thank God I knew who did them. I could tell by looking at them. They had told me enough that I knew who it was, but please put your name on the back. And what I'd like to do eventually is get some kind of tag with people's name on it. I haven't found, if anybody knows anybody that could do like little tags or some way to put the artist's name on it, that would be a big help. So, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. Just check my notes to make sure I covered everything. I believe so. So, any questions? Um, See, now normally we would walk around while you're doing this, and of course we can't do that and help you out. Or, but uh, if you have questions, please let me know because you might be helping somebody else in the class as well. Nothing. Um, Nada. Marion. Is it going to get sealed somehow? Yes. Oh, thank you, Marion. Yes. Uh, this is what I used. It's a clear acrylic matte coating. If you want to do it at home, you can do that. Yes. I did one of my first one in the studio today. It's very toxic. So take it outside. I had to put a fan on and everything. It was not one of my better ideas. It was raining though. And I thought, eh, well, mm -hmm. anyway, $8, $7.99. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. You can get it anywhere. Again, it's just a plain, uh, I like matte cut coatings. I don't like particularly real shiny stuff, but that's up to you. If you like it shiny, go for the shiny. Okay. A lot of the paints, you can get glitter paints now. So go crazy if you want. We can't wait to see what you come up with. Sky's the limit. Hey, any, thank you, Mary. And I forgot that part. I have it right here, but got any other questions? Does anybody have ideas that they've been tossing around that they'd like to uh, put on the tile? Anything? We have a Buddha on one. Uh, I mean, it's gone the gamut, seriously. Children's books. Um, have it, has everybody gone to the library? Have you seen the children's garden? And mm -hmm. so now if you do a tile and we mount it on the wall, you will be able to bring your family and friends and show them your artwork, get a bagel next door, mm -hmm. sit and play checkers at the table. I think the library in Monticello, I, we have a lot of nice libraries, but that one I think is spectacular. It's and nice. it's like a highlight on Broadway in Monticello, so. That's true. Yeah. But I, I wanna just ask about the paints. Like if you put down one color Mm -hmm. and then want to paint over it you know to if overlap it's dry it. you can paint right over it you can okay if it's wet pam you can blend it if you want to yeah. blend it on the okay. door of my garden one i blended it because i didn't okay. want it just brown i wanted right so if it's still wet you can definitely blend it okay and you can mix two colors to get a, yeah. another color so and it's very easy to thin them with water and clean your brush with water so um I know you only got a little bit of paint, but no matter what colors I would have bought, who knows what you want to paint. So a little, it'll get you started, if nothing else. Any other questions? 
I wanted to ask a question. Um, is it okay to copy something like for a reference and then paint it or is that a problem? That's a very good question, Karen. And the art course I'm taking right now online, um, that comes up because if you're an artist and you want to sell something, display mm -hmm. it, put it in a contest, you cannot use somebody else's photograph without yeah. their permission. Mm -hmm. And you have to give them credit, which only makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be careful with that. I mean, the cover of this book and I went online, there are all kinds of different, you know, covers for sure. this. Mm -hmm. But I figured, well, here's what I think it should look like. And I found a garden gate that didn't even have to do with this book, but I found a garden gate to give me an idea. And I didn't copy it. Or I just got to start. Yeah. You know, got me started. And okay. one with that I showed you that I finished first, that's just me. I wanted an open door, so I went online and said, show me a picture of an open uh, window. Uh -huh. You know, uh, as long as it's not copied verbatim, okay. it's a great way to get ideas. And I just, uh, there is, you know what, I'll send it to you. There is online a site that has photographs that you're more than welcome to copy and use. It's, I forget what they call it, it's open something okay um, and I just got that in my class today somebody sent it in as a, something you can do because there's some landscapes and yeah sure you know, got to be careful with that <laughs> yeah but that's a great question we yeah. go through that all the time um do you want to sell it no you're not going to sell it you're going to display it yeah you know if it's copied from someone or a photograph that someone else took just you can give them credit for it just say on the back, uh, created from a uh, photograph by blah, 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 whoever. Oh, so I, I could do that then? Yeah, and then you're fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not that serious, yeah. right? No, okay. no, okay. not in, like I said, not unless you're going to enter that, in a contest oh, or oh. Um, an yeah. art thing or a gallery or, mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? I wish I could really see all of you. I mean, I am, but it's not the same, but no. very happy that you're here. And I can't wait to see what you come up with and uh, just have fun. Thank Art you. is fun. Yeah. No pressure. Okay. Very okay. relaxing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? No, Jonathan, anything you want to add? Actually, the question that Marion had about, um, the top the coding that was the question mm -hmm. that I had so yeah I'll do great. that or if you, if they want to buy this they can do it uh in fact the one that's been up all winter I cleaned today and I recoded it so uh this is one uh, there's probably thousands on the market but make sure it's acrylic if you're working with acrylic paint make sure it's acrylic that would be my only uh and if you want matte or you want it satin or you want it really shiny, that's up to you as well. Okay. Could, could yeah. I have one more basic question? Yep. Um, would you, would, did, with, do you put um, something on the background before you paint on top of the slate or can you just paint on it black? You can paint right on the slate. Okay. Yep, right. Goes on. It doesn't peel off. It, okay. You know, Mine's been up the one with the gardener in the garden there with the table and books has been up for a year and I went wow. and got it so I could show you what it looks like when it's done that it's mounted on a piece of board and you know it makes a nice presentation. So you didn't fill all the all the gray parts or anything? Uh, do what spray? Did you fill in all the all the parts on the tile? Paint in no. all the parts? No. In fact, okay. I was looking at it, and I remember when I was painting it. Oh, that's that's what I wanted to ask. That's okay. There, these white areas. That's from being on the roof, and I figured, you know what? It is what it is. You okay. Know, okay. Ages it or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, and please, Susan, you know, I can give a... you my email if you want to send me questions or send them to Jonathan, at, and he'll send them to me if you come up with something that. I didn't cover. Please, Susan, you know. we had a question in the chat, um, mm -hmm. and it was, does it need to be vertical displayed, the painting? Not necessarily. I mean, we do attach it where these holes are in the slate, 
but there's no reason why it can't be horizontal. I glue it too. We glue it and we screw it in, you know, so it's not going anywhere. And there's no problem if you want to do it this way. It's a great question. Never even thought of that. Anything else? All right. Well, I wish you luck and you. have a good time. Thank, Thank you. Sam. Oh, you're welcome. It's nice to see everybody. I love this. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, have fun. Enjoy it. Great. I mean, don't stress. It's just to okay. have fun with. Thank you, Susan. Okay. You have Thank a good night. You too. you too. Nice meeting everyone and seeing old friends and good. Jonathan, thank you for your assistance. <laughs> I am not the most computer savvy person in the world. You definitely got me through and I appreciate that. Set me I'm up. Happy to help. Thank you, John. Okay. Have a good You're night, welcome. everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.